Today, we're gonna put AI to the test and see if it can truly do a better job than me. Show face, show way, just stay. Today, I'm gonna do a breakdown of this viral effect I did in my recent project of making the car invisible. I'm also gonna compare this to Higgs field and we'll see which one we prefer. Without any more delays, let's get right into this project. So let's first start and go into Higgs field and let's see what the AI will generate. I've been messing around with Higgs field just to see what it does and just getting familiar with it. So I'm gonna go to the create a video tab and let's get a screenshot of our clip. To make it fair, I'm also gonna solo the clip so I have no color grade on it. I'm gonna go to content aware fill, change my quality to full and create a reference frame in which I'm gonna export from Photoshop. So now let's write a prompt for this exact clip. I can see here too, there's a bunch of options I can pick from. Resolution, I'm gonna switch it to 1080 just so we get the most and four seconds is enough. 916th aspect ratio for vertical. So I wrote my prompt, I'm gonna go ahead and generate and we'll see how long this takes. In the meantime, I'm gonna go back into After Effects while this queues up. I've dabbled with a few generations in Higgs field and it does say up to 45 minutes. Could I create the same effect if not better in a faster amount of time in After Effects? Let's see. So we have the baseline here, which is just a subtle speed ramp with time remapping. And the first thing we need to do is similar to how we uploaded that clip to Higgs field, we're gonna need to create a reference frame and delete the car. So let's think about it this way. We wanna remove the car, keep some elements, and we want the background floor to match. This is gonna be hard with a clip like this, but luckily we have tools such as Photoshop and Content Aware Fill. So first step you need to do is create the reference frame. Now that it's created, we're gonna go ahead and mask out the car with the pen tool. I'm gonna to mask all the edges and give it a little bit on the outside. And I wanna make sure I grab the shadow down here as well. And now we're gonna to go to selection, feather at two. Okay, and now we're gonna use the remove button on Photoshop. So it did it almost seamlessly and right away. So here is our generated image without the car on it. So now we can go ahead and export this and put it back into After Effects. Make sure you set the full quality in JPEG. Now we have our reference frame that we edited. I'm gonna go ahead and trim it to the same size of our original reference frame that we made from Content Aware Fill. I'm gonna delete that and keep this here. Now we need to solo our bottom layer and make a mask to Content Aware Fill the car out. What it's gonna do is take that reference frame and then it's gonna generate based on the mask path. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of edge so it has something to track. Sometimes the tracker isn't perfect, so you may need to use Mocha to do the tracking, but in this case, it should be okay. So I made the mask, I'm gonna set it to none. When I press M, change the mask to none so I can see everything. Then we're gonna right click the mask, track mask, and we're gonna analyze forward. You just wanna keep an eye out and make sure all the edges stay in frame. I'm worried about this bottom one. So since that bottom one is having issues, I'm gonna go ahead and just drag it a little more out. Same with the top. And we'll do it again. Now we have the mask done. We can switch the mode from none to subtract and open up content aware fill. Make sure you solo your reference frame as well and keep it visible. And now we can select both and generate fill layer. I like to use these settings, object, lighting correction, and moderate. And you'll see here that it generates it. So we're gonna press generate fill. Using this method, sometimes it will delete the first frame but that's okay, there's an easy fix to that and I'll show you how after. You can see here, as it's analyzed and it's done, it's now gonna process the content aware fill and you can actually see the live preview while it's rendering it out. As we wait, I'm gonna do a few more generations of the AI because I know it's not always perfect every time. So before we watch this, I'm gonna generate a few more prompts. All right, now the generation is done. If I scroll through it, you can see how well it actually did. On the track mask, you can see it did cut down a little bit and it's due because the alpha expansion here I have set at 10, but I like to do that to get a nice blend overall. I don't mind this too much. If you're trying to learn how to edit in Adobe After Effects, this will save you weeks, months, years of trying to learn. If you got tabs open, you got tutorials everywhere, but you still don't know how to make an edit from start to finish on your own. That's exactly why I built this course, to teach editing the right way. With real projects, updated methods, and step-by-step -step guidance that actually makes sense. I've been teaching Adobe After Effects for over three years now, and I personally help my students with editing, troubleshooting, guidance, and any field that they need help with. In addition to my private Discord server where you can talk to other members that have gone through the same exact things that you're going through. Over 600 editors have gone through this course and most of them had zero experience. Now, they don't even need tutorials. If you're ready to learn Adobe After Effects, set the trends and become an established editor, hit the link now and get started because 600 editors are already ahead of you. So now that we have our content aware fill, we can unsolo these layers. 
we can delete our reference frame or just hide it. And now we have a nice canvas like this. And now what we can do is we can remove our mask. We no longer need it. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer, hide the original bottom layer and delete the mask off of this. Now we have the blank canvas. Now you can see the first frame did glitch out again where it's not referencing it because the image was here. So what I'm going to do is duplicate my fill layer, trim it to this point, and then I'm going to go time freeze frame. And I'm just going to bring this one frame back. So now we just basically faked that one frame. So you can see here, you can't even notice it. So now everything is basically hidden. Now we have to remember what we're trying to do. I want the headlight and maybe the windshield to show. So it looks like it's floating and then have the car fade out. So to do that, we need to do masking, duplicate your layer, put it at the top. And now let's go to rotor brush, double click your layer. And now we can rotor brush out the car. So for this one, I'm gonna select the whole car, get it as perfect as possible, at least all the edges, change your reduced chatter. I like to go to hundred just to smoothen it out. So it looks pretty perfect to me. I'm gonna go ahead and freeze it. Now let's do another prompt in Higgs field and I'm gonna generate a third. Now we go back to After Effects. Our brush is almost done. Now it's finished, we have our rotor brush. So now we have our car. It does look a little funky because there is no shadow, but let me show you what we're doing next. Now we need to grab both our fill layers and go to where it says no mat. If you don't see this, click these buttons on the bottom or toggle switches. I'm now gonna pick whip this to my top layer, which is the rotor brush we just made. So now it's invisible on only the mask areas. To adjust it, you can just click on your matte layer, which is our rotor brush, I'll make it yellow. And you can adjust the feather just to make sure everything's smooth. You can see it goes in too much. So now I can change the shift edge to make it come out just a little bit. So now we have a nice blend of the car. A little bit of shadows here, but nothing too crazy. Just a little bit of yellow, which we can dole out later. So now we have the car officially removed based on this layer. So you can see here, if we change the opacity on this layer, it will go away. So right now you can see that it's almost a see-through look, but for now I'm gonna keep the opacity at full. And now we need to make another layer. So I'll duplicate my original, put it on top. And now I'm gonna mask out the part I want to be floating, which is gonna be the headlight. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please leave a like and subscribe. And I love doing recommendations that you guys tell me to do. And if you wanna learn more, on my website, The Editing Experience, you can sign up and get weekly new lesson drops as well as learning from scratch in After Effects. I accidentally did the rotor brush on the wrong layer, so I'm gonna have to do this again really quick. So back to what I was saying, you duplicate the original layer and do a rotor brush on that new layer. I accidentally did it on my mat. Our video is still generating on Higgs Field. Let's watch the first one it did. So this prompt was smooth pan shot three feet to the right the car turns invisible and the panels flash a yellow color. The headlights turn on as the car is turning invisible into the background. Let's see what it generated. Uh, almost like a Transformers thing. I probably wouldn't use that. And now let's get back into After Effects because our mask is frozen. So now we have the headlight right here. And what I like to do is I change the shift edge because I want to kind of show a little bit of the yellow of the car. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my layer again, delete the roto, and I'm going to mask out the headlight. You can even mask them together, which I'm doing here, but separating mask can also help. Now that I have these both masked and separated, I'm just going to go ahead and pre-compose them together. So now we have our mask layers like this. And we can go ahead and go to our mask layer, which is right here the matte layer and I'm gonna keyframe and opacity, put the 100 towards the end and put the zero towards the middle. Select these two key points and I'm gonna change the curve on the graph. So now we have the car going invisible with some parts of it and that's pretty much it. Now all we need to do is make the rotor brushes of each part of the car and match that to the beat. So the best way to do this is you can drag your song in here since it's already speed ramped. But since I already know the points on it, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this really quick. The effects I'm putting on here is rotor brush. I'm also putting a deep glow on here to give it that nice glowing effect. And I basically just keyframe the exposure and the radius, but mostly it's the exposure that you wanna to set to zero. So you have a nice type of glowing flash effect. Now we can go back to the main comp and let's do some zooming in. So for this one, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer and I'm gonna add on the effect transform. Just gonna add that real quick and add that to my layer. 
So now I'm gonna keyframe scale. I'm gonna do uniform scale. I'm gonna keyframe them together. Press U and I'm gonna put the original value somewhere in the middle and I'm gonna start this zoomed in. So we have it zooming in, goes like this. And then it will flash into the next clip and I'm gonna set that towards the end where the clip ends. So we get the full zoom out towards the end. I'm gonna select both of these, go to my graph tool and essential effects. And I would use this graph right here, but if I need to make my own, I'm just gonna go like this and adjust accordingly. I want it to be slow scale and then rapidly scale towards the end. So I'll make this flat and I'll press apply. So you can see here, it does the proper graph. In this case, scale is going down. So the graph is basically just upside down. Show face, so wait, just show face, so wait. And that's really it. That's how I did the effect on this edit. First, remove the car and then mask out the car and get a little creative with the effects and styling. Real quick, if you ever wondered what tools I'm actually using in my edits, it's these right here. Essential Effects is my custom extension for Adobe After Effects. Built for speed ramps, shake effects, graph editors, animations, and so much more. And for my sound design, I have Essential SFX, which is for DaVinci Resolve, Adobe After Effects, and Premiere Pro. With over a thousand included sound effects, live waveform preview so you can hear it, and an organized category of all these sounds. You can even upload your own sound effects, songs, whatever you want into the extension itself. I built these plugins to speed up my own workflows, and now over 2,000 editors are using these plugins to do faster, cleaner, and more accurate edits. If you wanna stop wasting time and build better edits, these tools are available right now on djordanmedia.com or check the links below. Now let's go into Higgsfield and let's see the two generations they did and maybe even put it in the project to see what it would look like. So this is the second generation. Smooth pan shot, three feet to the right. The car turns invisible and the panels find a yellow color, flash a yellow color. The headlights turn on as soon as the car is turning invisible into the background, keep the camera locked on the headlight. Let's play this. So it, I don't know what that was, some type of frost effect, the headlights off, the maskings off, the, the headlight at least rays are off. The car never went invisible. It just kind of ghosted it a little bit. Uh, it's also interesting to hear the sound effects that this is creating. So now let's go to our third generation. Go closer to the headlight. The camera locks in on the headlight. As it turns on, the car starts to go invisible and blend with the epoxy floor. Smooth locked on motion like the Jordan Media. Although my prompts could be a little bit better, I'm giving it as much information as possible. All right, so the um, the headlight turning on part, not bad. Not bad at all, if I'm being honest with you. This is very, very usable right here. Um, that's definitely something I could see myself using. Uh, and then obviously it goes invisible. It just fades into nothing, into the floor itself. Maybe that's a prompting problem. And keep in mind, these three generations are 54 credits or whatever it is. I'm not sure how much I'm paying for, but I'm sure I don't have that many generations left. So there's only so many times you can reprompt it. Our first generation was actually the best one. So I'm gonna put it in here and I'm even gonna see how it looks like with the color grade. Um, we would have to adjust the clip to go 200. So it is in 1080p. It's not terrible, but it's also not great. So let's see AI versus my edit. I'm gonna try it a little bit harder as well to try to get this to work. I'm actually gonna speed ramp this as well. I'm just gonna go in here, speed ramp it to the end. And let's just add in a speed ramp graph like this. Maybe this one. It does not look good in my opinion. It looks like a bad film work as well. Uh, terrible camera movement. But what does save it is the sound design. The sound effects sound cool, even though it's chopped with the time remap. Let me duplicate this and put the audio on and then take off the timer map so it can have normal audio. Let's give it one last try. It's not bad, even with my sound design on top of it. In my personal preference, I'm not too worried that AI is gonna take over because when it comes to actually executing your direct ideas, unless you're an expert at prompting, if it even accepts really detailed prompts that are paragraphs long, I would not use that. And I would just stick to using your skills in After Effects. But if it can help with creating things you didn't have before, such as footage or angles or shots, AI might be very helpful. 
for me, I'm gonna continue just editing in After Effects until I find a great use for the AI tools. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment on what you wanna see next.